Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, the activity in Damascus, Syria continues to skyrocket off the charts. So I woke up this morning and this was one of the first things that was sent to me. Uh, this article from R-U-D-A-W titled, Violent Explosions Hit Damascus. And then I went over to the Times of Israel and saw that they had just put this out. Recent article titled, Syrian Military Claims Israeli Airstrikes Hit Near Damascus. War Monitor, Three Dead. Let me read some of this to you guys. Israeli airstrikes allegedly hit several sites on the outskirts of Damascus on Saturday, just a few hours ago, according to the Syrian military, while a war monitor said three people were killed in the attacks. The strikes came from the direction of the Golan Heights. The observatory said the assault was the 10th apparent Israeli strike on Syrian territory since the beginning of the year. Now, why do we continue to talk about the massive increase of Israeli airstrikes in and surrounding Damascus, Syria, especially since the beginning of the Israel-Hamas war, which started on October 8th of last year, 2023. Why are we continuing to talk about this? Well, I'll tell you why. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 17, verse 1, over 2,500 years ago, the prophet Isaiah records the following. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Isaiah makes it very clear that a time is coming when the city of Damascus, Syria, will become a ruinous heap. It shall be taken away from being a city. So this prophecy has not been fulfilled because Damascus still stands. Damascus is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the entire world. Yes, there is parts of Damascus, Syria that are in very bad shape right now. However, you can still work and live and move around in Damascus, Syria. But Isaiah makes it very clear here that when this prophecy will be fulfilled, Damascus will be destroyed. And when you continue to read in Isaiah chapter 17, it even tells you the timing of the destruction of Damascus. When you go to Isaiah chapter 17, verse 14, we read the following. And behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. So Isaiah makes it very clear that something is going to happen overnight in Damascus, Syria, that causes it to become a ruinous heap, that causes it to be taken away from being a city. Now, what exactly is going to occur overnight in Damascus, Syria, that will cause the destruction of Damascus and cause this prophecy to be fulfilled? Well, we cannot 100% be dogmatic and say we know for sure what's going to cause the destruction of Damascus, but I want to connect several dots with you guys on why we are on the verge of this prophecy being fulfilled any day now. First, in case you did not know, Damascus, Syria has become the hub of terror that Iran and its proxies, mainly Hezbollah, are using to distribute weapons around to these different warehouses to use against the nation of Israel. That's why we've seen over 80 Iranian cargo planes in the last 18 months or so land at Damascus International Airport because what do you think is on those planes, folks? You guessed correctly. It's weapons that they're distributing, again, to all these different warehouses, the proxies of Iran, to use against the nation of Israel. And that's why we continue to see a massive increase of Israeli airstrikes in and surrounding Damascus, Syria, since this Israel-Hamas war started in October of last year, just a couple months ago. We know Hezbollah currently has over 150,000 missiles currently pointed at Israel. And the other proxies of Iran, again, they're sitting there in and around Damascus, Syria, 
going around to all these different warehouses, moving this stuff around. Again, preparing for future missiles to be fired into Israel. We also know that the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, came out and said that if Hezbollah full-on joins the war against Israel, that Israel will destroy Damascus with Bashar al-Assad, the current president of Syria, being the main target because Bashar al-Assad is letting Iran and its proxies use Damascus, Syria, as the hub of terror to distribute all these weapons around to use against Israel. We've also had several generals come forth and say that there is nuclear material underground in Damascus, Syria. And make no mistake about it, Bashar al-Assad, the current president of Syria, has nuclear material in Damascus, Syria. So when you connect all the dots, folks, we've seen a massive increase of Israeli airstrikes in and surrounding Damascus, Syria, since this Israel-Hamas war started a couple months ago, which means the activity in Damascus, Syria, right now is off the charts because Iran is using its proxies, mainly Hezbollah, to move all these weapons around to use against the nation of Israel. So it is only a matter of time before something gets hit that should not get hit, and this prophecy will be fulfilled. Here's the bottom line, folks. We know what the Bible says is coming. We know that Damascus will become a ruinous heap. It will, Damascus will cease from being a city. I don't want it to happen, but the Bible says it's going to happen. And what's happening there right now, folks, this is a critical situation. And this prophecy is on the verge of its literal fulfillment. And all I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world at everything occurring right now and look at what your Bible says. You'll see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the light boat right here and right now. That light boat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day. Very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me and God bless you all.